Well, hello, everyone. It is November 1st. Uh, my name is Stephen Mead with Domicile Real Estate, where we are on a mission to help California's renters become homeowners. This is our Southern California first time buyer market update for November 1st, 2022. I cannot believe we are there already, but we are. So I want to kind of recap a little bit since we're getting towards the end of the year about where we are and what I think you need to be thinking about in the next six to 12 months if you're a person who is considering buying a home, which if you're watching this, that is probably you or maybe even know somebody that you think should be buying a home. So just as a little bit of a commercial, if you're in Los Angeles, Orange County, and you'd like to work with us, definitely reach out. Uh, we've got a link to schedule a no cost, no obligation appointment down there. Um, we do a lot of work with first time home buyers. It is a passion project for us. Um, but let's get started. So the rules are all broken. And what do I mean by that? What I mean is anything that you've come to know in the last maybe 30 months or so, basically that, that kind of post pandemic housing market, a lot of those things and lessons that you might've learned are suddenly no longer applicable. So let me give you a good example of one of those lessons. And we're going to go into the stats. And I'm going to tell you why this is true and why this is happening. So number one rule was I think in the last two and a half years or so, the advice that I always gave buyers was, it is not worth it to buy a fixer home right now. You will spend almost as much money, right, as you would be spending on a fully done house, except you're going to have to redo it. And you're going to have to face expensive contractors and material shortages. Well, all of the conditions for that statement have now flipped around. So right now, our market is doing exactly the opposite. The price spread between the most desirable homes and say a given neighborhood and size point and the least desirable homes, that spread is widening significantly, meaning you get a very sizable discount for taking on a home that needs work or otherwise does not show terribly well. Um, so if you heard that old advice, which is now making a comeback, the buy the worst house in the best neighborhood, I would say that is a very good strategy at this exact juncture in the market. The other thing we're noticing is guess what? Contractors who previously would not give anyone the time of day, they are starting to be less busy. This is a consequence of economy and interest rates and all kinds of things, but what it means for you is that as a home buyer, it means your accessibility to these contractors is going to increase in the next six to 12 months. The other thing I wanna talk about is retailers and retailer financing. So even though interest rates are going up and that is a major drag, one of the things that's happening is that means we notice that retailers start to introduce programs like 0% financing for 18 months if you buy your appliances, or your flooring, or, or whatever the major sort of ticket item is. And I think those programs really give a lot of boost to people that want to essentially self-finance a renovation on a house if you don't have a bunch of cash saved up. So there's kind of a lot of things that are happening that are really shifting some of those things we've come to expect over the last two and a half years or so. So let's jump in. We're going we're gonna, to uh, kind of pepper in some other little insights here. So let's look at our closed prices. Now, again, I want to tell you and remind you that this is based on data from six to six weeks ago, four to six weeks ago. But you'll notice we've seen our, our median entry level single family home prices actually come down here to around $700,000. Uh, that's really kind of the level we were seeing back here back in um you know, honestly, really since the beginning of the year, when you think about it. So this is kind of like that January, February sort of market and pricing for single family homes, for entry level single family homes. You know, just as a reminder, what, what is an entry level home? Well, it's a three bedroom, two bath home in Los Angeles and Orange counties. And it is the first quartile. So if the median is halfway between the least expensive and the most expensive single family home, this is halfway between the least expensive and the median. So it's a quarter of the way up or the first quartile or the 25, 25th percentile house or, or you know, we can, we can say it a bunch of different ways, but it's meant to approximate that entry level into the market. Now, I'm a little fascinated that the condo market has priced a little bit differently. And 
you know, this is a little bit of a confusing result. And I, I'm going to show you why that's confusing in a second, because the condo market is experiencing what we call mixed market signals. That means some things are pointing to a stronger market and other things are pointing to a weaker market. So if we look here at our total monthly payment, right, you'll notice that that number has actually come down a bit because of that median price. Um, and the way that's come down is we're now right around that $5,900 a month price point level. And for that entry level single family home, and that's based on 5% down a 30 year fixed mortgage, which I wouldn't recommend doing right now. And it also includes mortgage insurance, taxes, homeowners insurance, uh, HOA fee in the case of our entry level condo. And so that's at $5,900 and our entry level condo has bumped to just below 4,800. And it's, it's interesting to see these narrow together a little bit because I don't know if that's a situation that will exist for very long. This makes me think this condo number is going to have to adjust. If we look at our minimum household income required, I think this is interesting too. We've got $145,000 here uh, for our entry-level single-family home and $117,000 for our entry-level condo. You know, the good news is, what, what does this mean, really? Well, if you have no other debts, it means this is the minimal income required to make this hypothetical payment. Um, you know, this is not terribly unrealistic with two college-educated uh, salaried borrowers to hit that 145 number. That's actually a number that I think is attainable uh, for that socioeconomic class. Now, if we look here at our absorption rate, this one is kind of kind of interesting to me, right? Because we see a little bit of further erosion here on our entry-level condo and uh, actually a pretty decent number here for entry-level single family home. And I don't have the slide in front of me here, but I wanna talk about something that's really important if you're an entry-level home buyer, like extremely important. So we are noticing a pretty big difference in the market between the entry level end of the market, which is what we're showing right now today, right? This is entry level and sort of that median or kind of upper quarter end of the market or a move up market. Some people call that, that's a little bit more expensive. And we are seeing that that move up market is, ex is a lot softer, right? Especially for those homes that are not desirable, like those homes right around a million dollars, right? That is a difficult or more difficult I think price range to be a seller. And so here's my advice to you if you are a buyer. If you are a buyer and you really, really want to make a play for your future, right? Like we're talking five, 10 years down the line. I will actually tell you that now is the time to do something um, that might sound a little bit risky. And I don't want you to take an unnecessary financial risk, right? Like don't do something stupid here. But I think now is a great time to go after that home and that move up neighborhood, right? Maybe the one that you can only afford a bottom end home uh, to get into that neighborhood or maybe even a little bit bigger home than, than, than you think you need right now, but you anticipate needing. And the reason I mention this is, is I'm going to lay this scenario out for you. I think those homes are softer right now. So number one, I think you're going to get a better deal. Number two, interest rates are relatively high right now, but I think there is a very good chance in the next five years and a darn near 100% chance in the next 10 years that rates will be lower than they are today. So this means you will have an opportunity to buy a house and have a certain price point today, a certain payment level. And in the next five or 10 years, you will be able to lower that payment on the same house. So um, you know that future looks like your housing costs could actually go down over time. Um, and again, for the other reasons I talked about earlier, I think doing work on properties is going to be a little bit easier. So you know, if you are able to make that kind of a stretch to actually get more towards those median prices rather than the first quartile, I think now is the time to do it because we are seeing absorption rates that are significantly lower as that price range goes up, especially that sort of middle market, right? Not the high end, but definitely above the entry level. Okay, looking at our total inventory, right? We are now starting to see this inventory has dropped a little bit on these entry level houses. It bumped a little bit and now it is crested. Um, this don't, don't get super excited, right? If you're looking where were we last year, we were in a downward fall towards the end of the year and we still have way more inventory 
in that entry level single family home segment. So I, I won't call inventory low. Inventory is normal, but it is now looking like it is going to start doing that decline towards the end of the year. Um, we even see a hint of it happening here on the condo. But again, that condo market is kind of interesting. It is not moving like we thought. If we look at our percent still active, um, this kind of crested up here and it's really been riding in this, in this kind of zone. Um, if we look at our weak supply of homes, this is the one, right, that really gives me pause on the condos. The condos are the red line here. And you see, you know, there was a period of time when we were below three weeks of supply of homes. Now we're at about 12 weeks, right? And that number is accelerating. And really look at how close these have been together, but they've started to break apart here. And you'll notice that entry level single family home, that actually, that inventory or relative inventory dropped in the last week, back below 10 weeks uh, in about the mid nines. And I'm curious what's gonna happen. Are we gonna see that number fall? And I wanna direct your attention to where we were last year. So I've talked about this before. There, there are two ways of measuring inventory and we show you both of them. This is absolute inventory, right? This is number of houses on this side. This is relative inventory, meaning relative to how fast people are buying houses, how many weeks do we have worth of houses available? And if you'll notice, that number declines a little bit as you head towards the end of the year, but it, it, it doesn't, it, it really stays pretty stable. So if we see this reverse, right, especially for these entry-level single-family homes, what does that mean? That means buyers are starting to take notice of this and saying, hey, maybe now is a good time for me at this entry-level into the market. So we want to keep an eye out for that. So everything that you've been taught about the last couple of years, ways to bid on houses, to accept not doing inspections, that you'll never get closing costs, credits accepted, all of those rules have flipped around, right? We can, we can toss them all out the window because this is a very different market. And I think if you are smart, and you are strategic, there are a lot of opportunities for buyers who are in kind of the right situation to take advantage of some of those opportunities, which admittedly is not everybody, right? Um, you know, some people, they need a turnkey property, period. Their, their lifestyle, um, you know, maybe their family situation, whatever it is, not going to work for them. But if you're the kind of person that can take advantage of that, really, um, definitely some good opportunities out there. Anyhow, thank you so much for watching. Again, if you are looking to buy your first home here in Southern California, Los Angeles and Orange Counties, or you know someone who should be, definitely reach out to us. We would love to assist you and give you information and knowledge. That is what we are here for. Do not forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Um, questions, comments, as always, we love them. We'll see you again real soon.